welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here with you in another day walking in faith, walking in the scriptures. What a day it is. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a day that God has provided us to be able to just continue to use our gifts and talents for his glory. Another day that God has given us to be able to be in his word and just to see how he walks faithfully with us. And we just can continue to uncover, uncover who Jesus is, what is he doing, and what is he showing us. And how is he drawing us closer to the Father. That's that's his big mission. He's drawing us closer to the heart of God. And as we walk forth in his word, he continues to walk forth in his majesty. And so we've just come from John chapter 12. Uh, Jesus was anointed at Bethany. We have the uh, triumphal entry. Uh, he predicts his death. Um, then we're in verse 37 now, where as he's done these signs as he's done these miracles as Lazarus is raised from the dead and the Pharisees are saying this this is getting us nowhere people are shouting Hosanna people are going after him because of these miraculous signs this is getting us nowhere we have to thicken the plot we have to thicken the plot to be able to get after him and being able to know that he needs to be done away with so we're in John chapter 12 beginning at verse 37 even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of the prophet Isaiah. Lord, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this very reason they could not believe, because as Isaiah <coughs> says elsewhere, he has blinded their eyes and deadened their hearts, so they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn and I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. And so we get to see 800 years before Jesus even came into the world in that Bethlehem time of incarnation, we get to see a prophecy speaking towards the Messiah. We get to see a prophecy speaking towards the work, the miracles, the signs of Jesus, and that they wouldn't believe. You would think that this amazing thing, this majestic thing that Jesus is doing, people would say, I'm following him. He just raised somebody from the dead. But according to God's purposes as well, one of God's purposes was that the Messiah would come. And Isaiah prophesies in the later part of his uh, prophecy, as we get to see the servant songs, that the servant that was to come, the Messiah that was to be anointed, which is the anointed one, the Christ, the Jesus, as we get to see, we get to understand that he's going to be a suffering servant. That there's some that won't believe, and actually some, as it says here, blinded their eyes, deadened their hearts, just closed off their ears because they were going to be used for the purposes of actually bringing about the suffering and the death of the Messiah. And so some would not believe. And that would lead towards the fulfillment of the prophecy, the fulfillment of the suffering servant, the Christ, his name being Jesus, hanging upon a cross. And that's where we are in the Gospel of John right now. We're in that Passover week where Jesus is being sought after, plotted against to be able to bring him and put him away. Verse 42, Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not confess their faith for fear. They would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved praise from men more than praise from God. And this is just right to the heart. Uh, I, I don't know a more convicting verse in a lot of ways, except that we're all fall short of the glory of God, besides this one, because it's just so true. They, they had this faith, but they kind of cringed in fear because... Everything about their life would have changed. The believers that believed in Jesus, not just because of the miraculous signs, but just because of the Holy Spirit's working on drawing them close to the revelation that this one is the fulfillment of the prophecy, yet they didn't want to openly confess that because they would have been put out of what they know, a system, a, a culture, a economy of religion, of a system of the temple, the synagogue, and they just worked too hard for that. They probably went through the education for that. They they kind of provided for their family with that, and so they just 
they believed, but they didn't necessarily trust. They didn't trust fully that God would provide, but rather, as it says here, they loved praise from men. They just wanted to be a part of that system rather than praise from God. May that never be the case. May we repent of the affirmation of the praise that we receive from men, but rather walk faithfully and receive that praise from God. Well done, good and faithful servant. A beautiful phrase, but not just because I'm a nice person or because I'm a good person. Uh, Rather, there's only one thing that is good, and that is God. And may I live my life not searching and seeking after the praise of God, but rather just walking faithfully with him and understanding that the praise of men sometimes is doing the worldly things, but the praise from God is doing the kingdom things. Let us continue to seek after the kingdom of God. Verse 44, Then Jesus cried out, When a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. It's really talking about sin there. As for the person who hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. That very word which I spoke with will condemn him at the last day. For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Jesus revealing more and more who he is, and that's just to say, he does the Father's will. And as he approaches us with that, as we receive that, as we walk by faith in that, may we do the same. May we just do and say what the Father has willed us to do and say. And that is to follow Jesus, to live in Jesus, live by the Spirit rather than of the flesh, to live with the assurance that we know what our ending is, and so to not cringe in fear, but rather confess and believe and walk in faithfulness of Jesus. It might mean some confrontation, but we're ready for that. Confrontation of what? Mere man? Mere titles? Mere positions? Mere things of this world? But hear this promise. Hear this prophecy. God foreknew what had to take place for us to not walk in darkness, and that was to send the light of the world, Jesus Christ. He came into this world to testify, to fulfill, and to be the one who would actually draw us close again to the Father's heart. Now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's going to be confrontation. (laughs) There's going to be the things of being able to understand that the world wars against the kingdom of God. But as we're in the kingdom of God, what will mere man do to me? Maybe there might be some suffering, but that's where Jesus is continuing to call his disciples to pick up your cross, follow me. Where else are we going to run, the disciples said. (laughs) We're not going to run from that. You have the words and the way of eternal life. And so maybe this is a re-gearing for us of being able to understand that what we do in life isn't just for the benefit of those around us, but rather what we do in life is just all about a faithfulness to the kingdom of God, for the calling of the gospel, for the following of Jesus Christ. And may we walk in joy, knowing that he's leading us, and he'll never lead us to a place of death or despair, but rather he's going to lead us to the way of life, and life everlasting. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, let's be bold. Let's confess. Let's walk in the way of the kingdom. For in that is faithfulness. For in that, what a great word we get to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Have a blessed day.